Welcome everyone. This is the Jenkins Platform Special Interest Group, 15th of January, 2021. Happy New Year. Uh, here are the, the items that I had on the, uh, on the agenda, or here's the, whoops, here's the agenda. Uh, Windows Docker images, Docker image build success, and the JEP platform proposal. What other topics do we need to put on? So Alex, is there, uh, you've got a PR right now for Docker image build rework. Is that something you'd like to discuss here? Yes, that's on the Docker agent. We, we could talk about it. Okay, all right, great. Um, Gareth, were there any topics that you needed to, to be sure that we discussed here? Uh, actually, I've got one arm, uh, increase improving our arm support that I'd like to put on the list. Uh, no, I mean, no real extra topics for me. I think for the Windows Docker images, I think that's pretty much done as far okay. as I'm aware. There are some uh, questions from Daniel about the use of the Jenkins for eval org. I don't, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what his suggestion is actually. But, I, I um, think he, I think what his concern is, is we consider Jenkins for eval to be a, um, like a, uh, what is the word? Experimental. Prototype or, yes, prototype. It's experimental. experimental. Yeah. So he's saying, why are we publishing something that's pulled from that into a, an official image in the Jenkins org? So I, th I think a way we could, well, we can talk about it at, when we get there, but. Great, yeah. So. So that's a good topic on the Windows Docker images. Anything else? Caro, were there any, any particular concerns for you that we needed to put onto the agenda today? No, no, no. Okay, um, super. Nothing. All right, then let's, let's go ahead and run the meeting. So we like to review open action items first. Uh, I still have the open JEP. I, I am so proud that I've finally created the Google Doc, but I haven't touched it in a month with the holidays. So I promise that I will get back to this and, and go with our further discussions. The problem with the challenge here is that Debian Buster is, or Debian, which one is it? Debian 9 is coming to end of life, is reaching end of life and is already off support uh, in at least some descriptions, but our images are based on it. So we've, we've already got that challenge and this JEP is a good excuse to drive forward to make those changes. Any concerns or topics there? Okay, next, CentOS options for Adopt OpenJDK. Alex? Yeah, so I, I uh, created a PR. Uh, I think it's linked there. Um, it just needs review. Uh, I, uh, Olivier has reviewed it, um, but um, I don't know if we want any more reviews. And we had a question as to whether we needed to um, communicate that to users or not. Um, so that was kind of where we we're at. I, I don't know if we need to, if, it, if it's, <clears throat> you know, the same, uh, if, if it functions the same, do we necessarily need to make a big deal out of it? I don't know. Right. Well, and, and we fundamentally don't have a change log for, for those. I mean, we're typically not tagging our repositories when we deliver a new Docker image, right? So there isn't really a place for us to document a change log. Right. Now, maybe that's something we should change and find a way to, to document. Okay, great. And we, we do have a, a way of doing that in some of the, like the Docker agent and other places. So maybe we can um, reuse what we're doing there, which is just using um, GitHub releases. Um, but we just have to figure out because we have so many different uh, images and so forth, how do we want to do that? Right. Good observation. Thanks. Okay. Anything else on the on the CentOS options? Uh, 
not for me. Okay, plugin installation manager um, is is still growing in its adoption and its usage. We're now using it in the documentation. Um, I like the idea, Alex, that you had suggested earlier of a shim to, uh, to allow install plugins.sh to continue to exist as a script, but just have it called plugin installation manager. I, I started on something like that. Um, I, I can create a PR from that. So I was just running the same tests that we had um, previously. Uh, oh. for the install plugins, but with the shim to make sure that it functioned the same way according to what it was. So um, I, I can probably maybe have a, a PR for that next week. Oh, that, okay. That's, that's very encouraging. Okay. So if it were, if we were able to do it with the shim, I think I agree with you that it may not need a post. It's just, yes, this is the new implementation of, of plugin installation manager. And maybe we can put out a um, uh, on the developer list or something once we have like builds going to Jenkins for eval or something or or push some images to Jenkins for eval and, and say hey can you guys test this in your workflows just to make sure there's um, no corner cases that we don't have covered in our tests. Uh, now and is there a facility in the image that we could deliver some well good good so some sort of a pre release yeah. You get feedback. Excellent. Okay. All right. Anything else on the plugin installation manager? Okay. Next topic then was um, multi arch CI or multi arch. Uh, Alex, I'm not nearly up to date on that one as much as I should be. Anything you want to share there? I know Jim is is off on other projects right now at IBM, so he's not available for immediate work. Right. What? Yeah, I, I think um, so. I mean, I kind of reviewed what he what he did, and it seems fine. But we also need to figure out how it um, how it needs to fit in with like the Jen any Jenkins file changes and things like that, so that it actually gets built, uses the correct agents for the different architectures, all the um, uh, you know all the images getting tagged correctly, that sort of stuff. So. Um, I don't know, I might set up like a test instance or something and it locally and, and run through some of the flows, have it pushed to my, um, just my um, repository area on Docker Hub, just to see how things work. Good, okay, so that, I like that, That's, that makes sense. Um, that that how do we, how do we stage tests or how do we stage development is interesting also for the Jenkins core releases, particularly the security releases where Olivier is wanting to move more and more towards staged builds as a, as a standard process. Mm -hmm. And we certainly don't stage Docker builds right now, right? Our, yeah. our Docker builds are, we build it and it go, it's published immediately. Right. Okay. Great. Okay. Well, on that on that multi arch stuff, is that just building for multiple architectures, or actually using like Docker multi arch support? So we have well, we have um, a, an S three ninety X and a PowerPC agent that have been um, donated by I think IBM. Right. So not, right. And so there is. Um, there are people who want you know S three ninety X and PowerPC and and ARM. Uh, agent images. So it's building and releasing those images. We've done it in the past with uh, QEMU, um, but it, it provided some challenges in terms of performance and um, actual functionality once the image was actually being used, um, which is why we wanted to go to um, using actual physical agents uh, for those architectures. And then we also, we do have ARM on the um, AWS, uh, ARM64 agents on AWS. So we, we've, we have um, physical agents that we can use for all of those architectures now. So that's, that's still pushing, it's pushing multiple images, like an image for each architecture. Correct. So the Not same tag, the, yeah. just different architecture um, for, the, okay. for that image. 
so so okay. but there is a concept isn't there in in docker of a, a single image that is multiple architecture or have i misunderstood that so it deals with manifests and things like that i'm uh, not entirely up to speed on that but you have to push it like a manifest yeah. um, okay. and i think that jim's changes do that it, they deal with the manifest and and so forth you, you push like multiple layers like a layer for each architect each architecture oh. Oh, that, and that makes and it, sense. And it's, yeah. So that when you reference it, you just reference whatever, you know, I don't know, you know, like a Jenkins LTS. And if you're on ARM, you would get the ARM version. So you don't have to explicitly say, I want the ARM version. Okay. So, and, and Alex, your observation is, as far as you can tell, Jim's Jim's pull request is proposing to use multi-arch that way. So it would be that really would be publish publishing an image for all architectures that is a single image, but with multiple layers, with multiple with layers that are platform specific. So my, my understanding is that it's using manifest to do something similar. I, I don't know the underlying implementation, but like the manifest is basically a, a generic um, definition of the image which then has what architectures are supported for that image. Um, and so, but that's my understanding. I, I'm not by any means uh, any sort of expert on the multi-arc stuff, but that's my understanding of, of what I've seen. Great, all right. And, and that may be one where Gareth, your understanding of might be benefited by, we, we get, get some benefit by having you review that pull request. So that's, yeah, I mean, this is something that we're, I've got a PR that's uh, on top of Damien's PR, actually, for the changes for the sort of Jenkins Infra Pipeline Library to add in multi-arch support for that. So it's something that we're sort of actively testing out, seeing how we can do that at the moment. Great. Okay. So, so there are other places where you're looking at going multi-arch. Yeah. Because I'm I'm interested from a from a Jenkins infrastructure. I'm interested because Amazon offers lower cost compute from ARM now than they do from from AMD sixty four. So there's some some interest for me in lower potentially lowering infra costs by considering putting some of our images into ARM, put it, some of our workload onto ARM rather than being on on Intel. I think Apple have put a bit of a spanner in the works as well with the right. new M1 right. stuff. Another <laughs> example, M1 is is a good example yeah. of that for desktop, uh, for uh, laptops. Uh, yeah. Everyone's having to update. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay, anything else on the multi-arch Docker question? All right, next topic then. Docker images for LTSC 2019. Gareth. Yes, yeah, so I think... Um, so the the windows the main the main images are all being published uh, and built and uh, so are the agents all of those PRs are merged um, there is yeah there was an outstanding question from Daniel around using uh, so the adopt OpenJDK images that aren't yet available we were publishing um, publishing them under the Jenkins Free Val org. With the idea that we'd swap them out when um, I think it was Alex's your PR was merged, um, but I'm guessing that the when we're publishing the agent images on top of those, we're actually pushing those to Jenkins. And I think is that is that the where the confusion is lying, or is that where, Daniel, where Daniel's question is coming from? Yeah, I think, I think so. Yeah. Because the parent image effectively becomes, yeah, you have a Jenkins image depending on a Jenkins for a Val image. So we could, I mean, we could push those other images, those base images to the Jenkins org. Um, that, that shouldn't be a problem. We could do that. Um, and then once they release their images, we could just switch that over. Um, oh, oh I that would, that would, I mean, it, the only reason it's not, it, I mean, the only reason it's not official from them is because that PR hasn't been merged. So um, I, I think they're, I, it's hard to tell when they're going to merge it. <laughs> uh, 
I've had ones that have gone for six months, some that have got some PRs that are, you know, two days. So um, depending on when they merge that, we can just push those base images when we build them into the Jenkins org on Docker Hub for now. Um, and then maybe that would just alleviate Daniel's concerns for now. I mean, do we, we know obviously people run um, agents on Windows um, or, or, or they run Jenkins on Windows. How many people do we know of that use these Windows Server Core actual Docker images? Well, I think it's going to be going to become more useful with uh, like Kubernetes. Um, if people need to do um, Linux builds and Windows builds, they may have um, they may start using these images more with Kubernetes. Um, I, I don't honestly see a bunch of people using these just directly, just because Docker mm -hmm. on Windows is not as um, capable as Docker mm -hmm. on Linux. So. That's my take on it. Is I think that the major use is is would be for the Kubernetes people. Yeah. It's just that the size of the image is is the, the images that are produced. They're pretty big. They're about two point eight gig um, for the Windows images, which yeah. may may be a concern. So I did. I have. I don't know if I submitted it, but I had another PR to do to enable slim images for the adopt Open JDK Windows. And I was able to get it down to like, um, for the nano server at least, down to like the 300 megabyte range, um, which is a lot more useful, I think. But yeah, I agree the the 2.8 gig image size is pretty prohibitive. So, but I, I don't remember if I got that PR merged or not. I'll look at that. But again, that's nano server as well. Um, but for agents, nano server should work okay. Yeah, I, I thought we had bumped into challenges with nano server because it was missing crucial things, but but I, I don't remember, so okay. We, we do have nano server um, images right now for the agents, um, not, for oh, the serv not for the server or for the controller, I mean, um, but we do have for the agents, um, so. Um, we have and Git runs on it, um, and and some stuff like that. So uh, at least those things work under the, the agent image. So I, I like I have no idea how many people are actually using the images. That's that's kind of hard to know as to whether they're actually useful to people. <laughs> right. Okay. Gareth, anything else on Windows Docker? I uh, know that's 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 it really. Okay. So next topic was the ci.jenkins.io master branch. And the question was, could we set a goal to bring, make it pass? And we're not passing yet. Any comments or feedback there? It's it's the publish experimental step that's failing. So the build is working correctly, but it's once it tries to publish those to the Jenkins free eval. Um, it, it's failing because of we need to update the Jenkins file um, because of some of the changes that uh, on a PR that Jim made. Um, I believe I have a PR to fix that, but I need to double check that. The other option is we just disable that publish to Jenkins for eval um, for now because I, I don't know if people are actually using those images or not. Uh, again, we, we don't, it's hard to know whether they're using those, who's using those and how many, you know, how many and stuff like that. Great. Okay. Excellent. So those are the so, two options. Okay. All right. So next topic I'd propose to skip because I don't have, I have done nothing to prepare myself for a conversation with it unless someone else feels like they really want us to talk about the Docker platform jet draft. I'd like to skip it for now. Any objections? It's fine with me. Okay. Um, I'll excuse my shame for not, for now we'll uh, revisit, rework, revise and reopen discussion is that is that document um open for commenting 
it, is, it is okay it's right. it should be uh, let me double check just to be sure it should be shared for oh no it's not open for commenting shame on me now it is okay anyone can comment now sorry okay. about that i don't know why i didn't do that that's 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 embarrassing at another level okay docker image build rework so alex yeah, so this is so I have a PR open um, on the Docker agent um, to rework so that even the Linux images are built and published from within um, the RCI infrastructure. Um, and the reason for this is um, there have been some PRs in the past that want to add um, things like uh, build date, metadata, and things like that. And using the auto build um, features of Docker Hub do not allow you to do things like that. Um, so or override environment variables um, for publishing or tagging or things like that. So the, the PR just um, builds and publishes the images for both Windows and Linux within the ci.jenkins.io or trusted, depending on, on uh, well, for it would only publish on trusted, it would build on ci.jenkins.io for both. Oh, okay, so it builds on CI jenkins.io and publishes okay it basically takes what we're doing with windows right now which right. is we're doing the build and publish all within our infrastructure because they don't support auto build on um uh, the docker hub builds um, so then it moves both into our infrastructure okay. all right so then needs review are there are there any compatibility risks hiding there? Compatibility threats that we need to be aware of or notify people of? It should sure. be just a direct port over, or yeah, it should be. Um, and one advantage it also gives us is um, Jeff Thompson has had um, you know issues having to go through like twenty Docker files and update the remoting version. Um, this also reworks it so that um, you can edit a single file, and it will pull that remoting version in. Um, for the new build. So it, it, it provides us some additional capabilities um, that are going to be nice, hopefully. Uh, okay. Now, I've, see, I've, I've been thrilled with Dependabot in other areas. Can Dependabot manage Docker files as well? Or no? Or, and, and don't yes. know is all. Yes, it can. So, certain uh, aspects right. of them. Yeah, certain aspects of them. Yeah. Okay, but this does not this this PR does not go that distance. It's Correct. it gives us a single place to manage them, and then we would submit PRs the usual way for that single right. place. Right. Yes. Okay. Excellent. Anything else on the image build rework, Alex? Nope. And this is just kind of the first one. I after I do this one, I, I and you know get feedback and so forth. I would do similar things to the other images. Um, this is just kind this of the is, easiest one. And, and, and is this for the core, the, the, the controller image or? No, this, this is for the Docker agent, which is oh, the, base, okay. the base agent image for like the inbound agent. Uh, it's not the base image for the SSH agent, but it is the, um, the base for the inbound and it, just kind of the basic, um, remoting agent. Got it. Okay. So once that is implemented for this base image, then look to apply the same apply the same techniques in the other images. Right. Got it. Okay. Anything else there, Alex? Nope, that should be all. Okay. So my last my topic here is improving ARM support, and and this is more a question than. Um, then an answer is what steps do we need to do to take to publish ARM images? Is it just do the the multi arch that we've already talked about? So are you saying for the controller or for the um, for everything or what, what? So for me, first would be agents, and then controller because with with I find the the Amazon 
ARM instances interesting even for the controller. They're, they like offer a 40% or 20 to 40% discount on terms of compared to Intel architecture. So we do, we do have um, AMIs for mm -hmm. ARM64 right now that we're actually using in our, in, that are connected to like ci.jenkins.io. Um, so that, that might be something that you could use in the interim. Um, it's, it's our, it's the normal, um, we use Packer to build it and it's basically the same as our Ubuntu based build agents, uh, but it's ARM64 instead of the AMD64. Um, and we're, we've been using those um, on ca.jenkins.io. Okay. So that's one option initially, if you just need the AMI um, identifier, you should be able to use it um, on AWS if you have a, like an internal usage for yourself, but we already do have those connected to um, ci.jenkins.io and trusted, I believe. Right, and, and so I've been, I've been using those quite happily the the arm the arm agent on ci.jenkins.io I confirmed yesterday again it works great so then in terms of image generation the arm support on our Docker image as I guess is what I should say because what we've really got I'm confident we run on arm um, I'm using it um, I haven't run the controller yet but the agents I don't think we have an agent's Docker image yet for ARM. Is that correct, Alex? That's correct. We don't have a, a we don't publish an ARM version. You could take what's there and build it on an ARM system. Um, and it would, it would, you should be able to build it just fine. Got it. Okay. Thank you. And then I assume the same applies to the controller is that as a first test, I could build my own image an arm and use that for experiments and to see, hey, how does it behave? Yeah, and we, we have that in our, our flow to build um, those images right now once Jim's PR and stuff get merged in. But you can right. still also do the same thing and, and build the normal, um, you, like uh, Debian image, for instance, um, on an arm platform and it would generate a Docker image for arm that you could use for the controller. I've, I've actually done that and it works just fine. Okay, excellent. Well, that, that addressed, that, that answered my question then. I've got got things going on there that are, I, I think ARM is a particularly interesting platform. Great, thank you. Any other topics we should address before we close our meeting? Oh, oh I take it back, I've got one more. Contributor Summit, I'll be sending a proposal shortly for a contributor summit associated with FOSDEM or roughly two weeks after FOSDEM. Uh, and what I'm gonna suggest is that SIGs spend time in the, in the introduction seg segment, summarizing their results and, where they're, and their plans. And so we'll, we'll likely get that responsibility and I'll probably try to be first voice, but assure that you're all aware of that proposal and I'll send a copy to you. Anything else? All right, let's call it a meeting. Thank you. I will post the recording after the after it's finished processing. Thanks.